Okay, okay. So, good morning, everybody. Let's uh, begin. Let's carry on. We're on Mesechet uh, Beitzah Davchet, Davchet Amud Bet. We started talking yesterday. We were going through this uh, Mishnah that talks about uh, the Shechita of a Koi on Yom Tov. A Koi, which we said, is a Safik Chaya, Safik Behema. Just mentioned there are two very, very significant differences between uh, two significant halachic differences between a chaya and a behema. The one that we've been discussing is the fact that a chaya, you have a mitzvah of kisui hadam. So for a chaya and for an off, there is a mitzvah of kisui hadam after shechita, which takes place by of covering up the blood by a behema that would not apply. And that's why we're going to have a, a uh, difficulty. I'm standing with a koi, which is intrinsically a safek, maybe chaya, maybe behema, nobody knows. Uh, so the uh, kisui hadam may or may not a mitzvah here. That's going to be one problem. There's another difference, which we haven't gotten to yet, but we will get to in today's year, which is regarding chaylev, that by a, that, uh, by a uh, chaya, <clears throat> the chaylev would be permitted, but by beima, uh, would not be. So we're going to see how that how that ties into it as well. But essentially what we said, we saw we saw the Mishnah that said, the Mishnah Nechul, and it was near the bottom of, of uh, Amud Aleph, it said, so, uh, the question was, what precisely is the Mishnah talking about? If it's talking about a case where, where you don't have any dirt, uh, which you can use to uh, which you can use to cover up the blood, so then why does it mention specifically koi? That would apply for a chaya as well. And the answer we said, no, you do have, but there is a distinction. There's a distinction that whatever the dirt is, you would be able to do the mitzvah of Kisoy Adam on Yom Tov for a uh, chaya, for a vadai, but you would not be able to do it for a safek, for the koi. That's essentially the, the conclusion of the Gemara, but now we're trying to establish why. So if we look on the, near the top of the, uh, Vamabet, Bet, um, right, we, we have a look from the third line. So, so yesterday it says, it says the Gemara says I'm Ela Maraba, Ela Maraba, Ef Kira Muchan. Right, there, there are a number of different uh, uh, models that we gave for where you might have the dust or dirt ready from that is not mukta in order to cover up the blood. One of them is from the Kira. So Maraba Ef Muchan Le Vadai Ev En Muchan Le Safek. So we said that it's right that it's considered muhan in order to do the kisoy adam of a of a uh, vadai of a chaya, but it's not considered muhan, and it's still considered muktzeh <clears throat> when it comes to the fake, when it comes to the koi. The question is why? Why do we make the distinction? <coughs> so says that so says the gemara is fake. Why why do we say not? Why are you not allowing to use this this uh, dust? To cover up the blood of the uh, safek of the koi, the kavid guma. Suggestion number one is maybe because when you're digging it up, you are going to be making a pit, and that is the melacha of binyan. Say the gemara v'dayinamik kavid guma, right? With uh, whatever animal it is that would that would apply. Ela keder Rabbi Abba. Why do we say for a v'day chaya we allow you to do this? Like Rabbi Abba, who we saw in the previous uh, the previous amud, where it's not uh, with a melacha shenat tzuchal kufa. So we say, So that logic would apply as well by the safek. So that's not the distinction. So another attempt. Ella, safek, maitama, maitama, Maybe we'll say, no, you can't do I, At this point, the Gemara is not uh, relating to the Isra of Muktza. At this point, the Gemara is relating to other Isurim which you might transgress when trying to cover up the uh, blood. Later on, it will come to Muktza because that's really going to be the answer. But it says maybe because when you dig it up, you're going to be doing ketisha, you're going to be over the malacha of of a, of a tochen, right? Of grinding up. It says Rashi here, Dil makavit ketisha galsina, shema yehusham legavim v'yachtisham. There might be you know clods of uh, earth which you're going to uh, crush up. Um, so vada. Uh, 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 so when it comes to when it comes to vaday also now why does the Gemara here say nigzol mishum ktisha meaning implying that you're not actually crushing up or grinding at this point but that it would be a but I would make a gzera that it might happen in general so Rashi here says vaday nami nigzol mishum ktisha he says meshani 
כיוון דרוב פעמים אין צריך לכתוש לא גזו רבנן משום קדישה. Since most of the time, especially if you're using אפק קירה, you don't have to grind it up, and therefore רבנן would not, uh, רבנן would not make that כזירה. דינה מיעטו לידי כך, לאו איסורא דאורייתא איכא, because, right, why is all of this only a discussion of a דרבנן? That even if you were to do it, it would not be an איסורא דאורייתא, says Rashi, אתי עשה דבכיסא ופאר ודחי לא תעשה. It's what the Gemara is going to address immediately, but it says even if in the, in the action of covering it up, you are grinding, you are transgressing a melacha, nonetheless, you're fulfilling the mitzvah of kisui adam, we're talking now about aivada echaya, and therefore it is in asei doche lo tase. Principle we have whereby a, a positive mitzvah uh, uproots the negative, uh, the negative commandment at the same time. Right, so that he has said the v'chisa v'afar v'dachi lo tase melacha. The positive mitzvah of covered with, with uh, of covering the uh, blood uh, overrides the negative transgression of melacha on Yom Tov. The kai melan b'perakam the yevamot. Rashi refers us to the Gemara in Yevamot Aftalad, where we have this principle of asay docheh lo tase. Okay, so that is just explaining why our, our understanding at this point is that there would be no isod right? So there wouldn't even be an isod rabbanan when it comes to where you are certainly fulfilling the mitzvah of kisoy adam. However, when it comes to a safek a koi. We not, may, there may not be a mitzvah because it may not be a chaya. So that's so, so that's the suggestion at this point. Says the Gemara. So answers. So this is what Rashi explained. But now we see it in the Gemara. It says vaday ki avid ktisha ati asay v'dach yed lo tasay. When you are certainly fulfilling the mitzvah of kisoy adam, so that is a, a, a positive mitzvah which overrides. The negative in this case. Now, yeah, this is what we saw this briefly yesterday, but he has the big challenge, which the Gemara asks, essentially two challenges. Number one, on this principle of When we say the principle that the Gemara learns in Yevamot, the principle of asay doche lo tasay, that is like the following examples, where you have uh, mila and sara'at, where you're, uh, th- there is an isur to cut off, to remove the uh, negat sara'at, but if that is in the place of the mila, so you are, you, you, when you do the mila, you are uh, removing the sara'at. Inami sadin betzitzit, where you have tzitzit, which is a shatnes, that the, uh, the beged, and the threads are together, wool and linen, and that would be uh, that would be sharpness. In those two cases, at the same time, at the same time there, where you uproot the prohibition, that is when you are fulfilling the mitzvah. When you are in the same action, one at the same time, of removing the uh, tzarat, you are fulfilling the mitzvah of milah. And one at the same time of wearing uh, shatnes, you are wearing tzitzit. Right? You're fulfilling the mitzvah exactly at the same time. Says Rashi over here. Um, he says, Mila b'tzara'at, dikhtiv, hishamer b'nega tzara'at. Right? We have the, uh, the pasuk, they're telling us, hishamer b'nega tzara'at. V'tanya b'kotzetz b'elato ha'katuv medaber, meaning, what did the Gemara learns out? That what does it mean? Be careful to nega tzara'at, not to cut off the baheret, not to cut off the, uh, the, the, the nega. ותניה בגמרד, אם לא הביא כלי במסכת שבת, ימול בשר עולתו, אפילו במקום בהר את יקוץ. אוקיי, so there the Gemara talks about a case where you're unable to, uh, you don't have a, 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 a smaller כלי, I guess you use the knife, and you would have to, you'd end up cutting off the, the uh, בהרת as well. Okay, that is permitted. That is a מצווה. אינה מי ציצית בכלאיים. The other case, says Rashi, is we have ציצית when it's כלאיים, it's שטנז, תכתיב לא תרבה שטנז. We learn this out from the juxtaposition of the psukim. Gdilim is another word for tzitzit. At the time, that's the key word, at the time of the milah, or at the time of wearing the talit, 
Me'aker lav, you are uprooting the uh, the uh, prohibition because you're transgressing it. Umakayem ase, but you're not transgressing because you are fulfilling the ase. Aval ase, but in our case, says Rashi, aval ase ze of the kisoy adam, right? Kshil kotesh, when he is uh, digging up the digging up the ground and he's and he's uh, crushing up this uh, this earth. Over belav, at that point he transgresses. The positive mitzvah he only fulfills later, only fulfills that later on when he when he covers it up. Okay, so that is the first challenge. How can you say say uh, They aren't actually happening at the same time. So says the Gemara. And now says the Gemara, No, it's not difficult. You must be talking about a case. Where in fact, at the same time that you are that you are digging it up, that's uh, covering the uh, that's covering the blood. You can imagine the person is digging and the earth is going in all directions. And as he digs and as he crushes, the earth actually goes and covers the blood, and therefore it's one in the same one in the same action. Okay, but says like right now, soft, soft. Yom tov asev lo Right, it's only when we say an ase doche lot ase, there's one one uh, mitzvah trumps the other. But we have two, right? You can't say that an ase is doche, an ase and a lot ase. You can't say that an ase is doche, an ase and a lot ase. And yom tov, you have both a positive mitzvah and a negative mitzvah. Negative mitzvah to refrain from malacha, positive mitzvah to uh, uh, also of, of Shabbaton. And therefore, uh, therefore, we cannot say I say do say in this case. And therefore, we would have to say that the only reason why, even by a vadai, that you're allowed to do this is not that you're performing melechet ktisha. It must be that it's if a kira of artichoach that it's uh, the sounds already uh, broken up and you're not uh, uh, transgressing in that way. And that would be the same for a vadai and for a suffix. Okay, so we still are not sure. We have to now try something else. We want, we're trying to establish why we'd be more stringent regarding a safek, regarding a koi, than we would regarding a vaday chaya. We suggested that it's got to do with making a pit when you are digging. We suggested it's got to do with ketisha when you are digging. We reject both of those distinctions. So, uh, next attempt. Says the Gemara, and now we're going to go back to Mukta. El Amarava. Efe kira dato levadai. The end at all is a fake. Okay, this may be his most uh, intuitive uh, reason here. There's going to be an, another reason afterwards as well. But we say, what What, what do we say? We started off essentially saying that Efekira, we said, it's actually there in the words, right? That it's related to, to uh, Muchan as opposed to Muktse. So we've spoken many times. What is Muktse? Muktse means it is set aside. It's set aside in your mind. Whether that's an objective or a subjective thing is a, is, is a question we won't get into now. But says Rava, he says, Efekira, when you have this Efekira, you have this uh, dust from the ash from, from the oven, levadai, the end safek. What do I mean when I say that it's not muktze? I mean it's not muktze that you have in mind to use it, but you have in mind to use it what you're definitely going to use it for. You don't have in mind to use it what you may not may not need to use it for. Says Rashi, the end safek, hilkach is muktze ika. Therefore, there is an isur of muktze. Uh, okay, we'll see uh, that's um, right, Rav Yoda we quoted before so now says well, Rava goes according to his reasoning how do we know this this is Rava according to his reason according to his logic we are now four lines from the uh, bottom of the narrow lines about halfway down the page Okay, I'll just read, I'll just uh, carry on reading the dissenting opinion and then we'll explain. So essentially the question is, when you have this, uh, or it could be anything, but when you have this uh, dust or this dirt in your home, we say it's not mukse because you have in mind to use it for a certain purpose. The question is, do we say that that applies for a lesser purpose, maybe a less common purpose as well? Rava seems to suggest that it's not mukse for whatever uh, I'm going to need to use it for, but a lesser need, which uh, 
Maybe it's not, it's uh, less likely and maybe I wouldn't have thought of, so that would uh, not apply, right? So, so, so what's the case? He says, A person brought in afar for the sake of covering up soa. Okay, you read these uh, these gemarot and you are very thankful for, for modern plumbing and different uh, forms of hygiene that we have nowadays. But the case is like, is like this, says Rashi. Right, you have a you have a baby in the home, and on Yom Tov you're worried that it's going to be uh, it's going to perform his needs, and then you have uh, a, 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 the excrement or whatever it will be inside the house, and you have to cover you have to cover it up with uh, you have to cover it up with dust. You're not going to be able if it's there and it's exposed and everybody can see it and can smell it. So then you're not going to be able to uh, say brachot and to daven etc. So you would use uh, again nowadays we have other methods. <coughs> But in those days, they would cover it up with dirt. So if you're going to use the dirt, so you bring in dirt for the purposes of covering up Tzohar. So then he says, You can also use that. You can also use that for um, covering up the blood of, of your chicken that you're going to uh, shech for your Yom Tov meal. Says Rashi, He has a bird that he's going to uh, shech on Yom Tov. In other words, the, the, the first need is a safik, right? Whether you may have you may have a scenario where you need to use the afar to cover up the tzohar. That may happen. The cover up the blood, you know, is a definite because you know that you're going to uh, going to need to shed the sperm. So he says, if you brought the, the dirt in for a safek need, which may or may not happen, so certainly you can use it. <clears throat> it's not mukta for that. Certainly it's considered mukhan and not mukta for a certain, a definite need, which I know I'm going to have. But what about the other way around? What about the other way around? Says Rava, um, if you brought it in and you had in mind, you had intention that you're going to use this for the definite need of covering up the blood of the uh, bird, then you cannot use it for that. It's going to be uh, it's going to be mutza. Um Says Rashi. There's a yeah a baby at home. So what's the reason? That is considered for the to cover the blood. That's considered a definite need. Because uh, he knew he was going to have to do it. Uh, so what is the point? You don't know what it's going to be. You don't know where it's going to be, if it's going to happen, if you're going to need to uh, cover up or not. So that is the opinion of Rava. Now just, that's the dissenting opinion. Yeah, Amri. He says the other way around. That is, uh, that would be, uh, that would be permitted as well. We consider that you can use it for that. Says Yarashi, mutal lechasot botzua kevan da azmane azmane da nami kalub levadai. He says once you've added it, it's, the dust is not uh, mukta. You've uh, set it aside for a purpose. This is karov levadai, and therefore you can use it there as well. But what we see from this is that Rava says if you have the dirt and it's set aside. For a vadai purpose, it's not necessarily set aside for a sapphic purpose, and therefore, I, I, uh, that's the distinction between a chaya, which is vadai, I'm going to need to, I'm going to need to cover the blood, versus a koi, which is a sapphic, and therefore I say it would still be mutzah. Continues the Gemara. We're now on the first of the wide lines. Amri b'ma'arva, pligi bar Rabbi Yosi bar Chama, Rabbi Zera, v'amri l'Rabba breder Rabbi Yosef bar Chama. So we have, uh, they said in Eretz Yisrael, we have this machlok at Tanaim, either Rabbi Yossi Bar Chama and Rabbi Zaira, or uh, 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 Rava, the son of Rabbi Yosef Bar Chama and Rabbi Zaira. Chad Amal Koi Haleu Ketsoa. Vchad Amal Koi Eina Ketsoa. Tistayem Dolava Uda Amal Koi Haleu Ketsoa. Right, so the question is, the machlok it was, do we say, do we assume a Koi is similar to the case of Tzoa, or do we say a koi is not similar to the case of Tzoa? Why? In other words, the koi is also a safek, but it's a different type of safek over here. The safek in the case of Tzoa was a safek of on Yom Tov, are you going to need this? Is this going to happen? Am I going to need this uh, 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 dirt to cover it up? 
Whereas the case of the koi is, is very different. Koi is also a safek because I don't know if it's a mitzvah, if it's required to cover up or not. But I know that I'm going to have this koi to be, to be shechted on Yom Tov. So therefore, are the cases similar or not? The Gemara says clearly, Tisdayim the Rava is the one that says that the cases are similar based on what we've just uh, based on what we've just said. Okay, so that is one. Um, right, Tisdayim the Rava Uda Mar Koi Rael Ketzua. The Amar Rava Hichnis Avar Chazor Botzua Mutar Chazor Bodam Tzipo Dam Tzipo Asur Chazor Bodam Tzua. Exactly, just quote of what we've just said. Tisdayim. So that concludes that Rava is the one who held. Like that, the case of koi is like the case of tzoa, and therefore he says that's why we can cover up of a vaday uh, chayad the blood, but not of a koi, which is a suffix. So that's one answer which the Gemara accepts; it's not rejected. There are alternative answers as well, but this answer really does seem to work. Um, next, Rami Bray the Rav Yeva Amar koi haynu tamad de lo machasina gzera mishur matarat chelvo. Okay, so this is what I said right at the beginning. This is the other difference between a chaya uh, and a bema. The one difference is whether that for the chaya you are required to cover up the blood. For a bema you are not. The other difference is regarding the chaylev. That the chaylev of a, of a chaya can be eaten, whereas the chaylev of a uh, bema cannot. Chaylev are parts of the uh, fats of the animal. So... So uh, uh, Rami Bredavyeva says a different answer. He says the reason why we say that you can cover up the blood of the of the vaday uh, chaya but not of the koi is because we're worried, right, that people are going to get the wrong un understanding. He says, uh, uh, If people are going to see you covering up the blood of the koi, they're going to say, ah. You're covering up the blood of this animal that you shechted. That means it's a chaya. That means that its chaylev is mutar. So people are going to think that the, but the chaylev may is actually a so because in case the koi is a beima. So in order that we don't make that mistake, that's why we don't allow it to cover up the blood. So it says the gemara, i achi. Well, if that's the case, I feel a bechol nami. What's it got to do with uh, what's it got to do with yom tov? If you're worried people are going to see the blood being covered up, that would apply any any day of the week. So i achi, I feel a bechol nami. On the Gemara, Bechol, Amri Lenaker Chatzero Tzarech. I say no. On 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 Chol, if it's on a weekday, people see you, uh, you know, sweeping up the uh, sweeping up the the dirt. I say, are oh, you just cleaning up? You're just cleaning up. You're not fulfilling a mitzvah of uh, of uh, Kisro Yadam. But on Yom Tov, you wouldn't be cleaning up. You wouldn't be doing that Torah. Uh, that's why it's a problem. Shachat Ba'Ashpa Ma'ika Lemeima. So what if you did the Shechita in a place? Where uh, in an ashpa, which is not uh, you know inside your home and not a place that you're going to be keeping tidy or or or, or tidying up, bali malech meima, or somebody comes to consult, somebody comes to ask a shaila, what are you going to say? Ela bechol i nami mesapka amri leir rabanan zir talach v'kasi, beyom tov i mesapka mi amri leir rabanan zir talach v'kasi. So you could say that, no, on Chol, right, and somebody comes to ask a Shaila, so you have a Masapka, you have a Safek, so people understand, they'll say, you'll get told, okay, go and put in the, the Tircha of going to to uh, cover up the blood. But on Yom Tov, on Yom Tov itself, people are going to think that, uh, no, if, if you're going and you're covering up the blood, you're not doing that for the, for, for the mitzvah, you're not going to go and... Um, Sorry, the, the, people people think that it is, and they, and therefore that you're allowed to eat that you're allowed to eat the chayev. Uh, so now we have a, now we have a new case, Rabbi Zera. And Adkan, we've spoken about the koi. We spoke about why. The uh, why the distinction between a vada and a safek in terms of why it is for the koi that you would not be allowed to that you would not be allowed to cover up the blood on Yom Tov. We saw four answers. Two, the first two which were rejected by the Gemara, and the last two which were accepted. Right, the first two related to digging up the pit or to doing the melacha of ktisha. But both of those we said there's no difference between a vada or a safek, and therefore not allowed. The second two answers which we do accept one is a Rava's answer which we say that it's got to do with muktzah, 
that anything we say, uh, the dirt is not mukta, it's we consider it mukhan for a vadai need, but not for a safek need. Okay, we saw whether that case of koi is, is, is comparable to the case of tsua or not. Maybe that's why the Gemara needs another answer, because Rava holds that it is comparable to that same type of safek, but the other opinion would be that it's not, and therefore that's uh, it's not enough. And the final answer was that maybe we don't allow it because we say of uh, the safek is because of hatarat chilbo. The people are going to see the blood being covered. They're going to think that the chaylev is is uh, permitted as well. So that's in terms of a coin. Now Rabbi Zera tells us another lacha regarding kisoy adam, where he says we're now uh, five lines from the bottom of the page. Tani Rabbi Zera lo koi bilvadamro. It's not just regarding koi, but afilu shachat beima vachayav of. What happens if 